Welcome back to another dark and spooky mystery here at GraveyardDance.com. Today, we have a strange and mysterious case that we'd love to hear your thoughts on in the comments section below. Before we get started though, we hope you've already went to the site and liked and followed our social medias so we can keep you updated when we bring you a new creepy case. We'd also like to invite you to pick up a new piece of Graveyard Dance merch in the form of a t-shirt, hoodie, or maybe a coffee mug. Anywho, let's move on to today's story. How many of you out there have heard about the disappearance of the Sauter family? On a fateful Christmas Eve in 1945, the Sauter family's lives in Fayetteville, West Virginia, took a tragic turn when a fire engulfed their home. George Sauter, his wife Jenny, and nine of their ten children were present during the devastating incident. In a twist of fate, George, Jenny, and four of their children managed to escape the flames, but the whereabouts of the other five remained unknown, and their bodies were presumed lost in the fire. The aftermath of the fire saw the Sodders grappling with grief and disbelief. Choosing not to rebuild, they transformed the charred remains of their home into a memorial garden, a poignant tribute to the children they lost. As the 1950s dawned, skepticism about the official narrative grew within the family, prompting them to erect a billboard adorned with pictures of the missing siblings. This billboard, standing along State Route 16, served as a visual plea for information and remained a poignant symbol until shortly after Jenny's death in 1989. Supporting their conviction that the missing children survived, the Sodders pointed to peculiar circumstances surrounding the fire. George vehemently disputed the fire department's conclusion of an electrical origin, leaning toward a suspicion of arson. This alternative theory hinted at potential involvement by the Sicilian Mafia, possibly in retaliation for George's vocal opposition to the fascist government of his native Italy. Despite state and federal investigations in the early 1950s yielding no breakthroughs, a glimmer of hope emerged when the family received a photograph in the 1960s purportedly depicting one of the missing boys as an adult. Undeterred, the Sodders, led by the last surviving daughter, continued to publicize the case in the media and online well into the 21st century. To understand the origins of the Sodder family and the events leading up to the tragic Christmas Eve fire, it's essential to delve into George's Italian roots. Born as Giorgio Sadu in Tula, Sardinia, in 1895, George immigrated to the United States 13 years later, accompanied by an older brother who soon returned to Italy. The reasons for George's departure from his homeland remained a guarded secret throughout his life. In the U.S., George initially worked on railroads in Pennsylvania before securing a more permanent position as a driver in Smithers, West Virginia. Eventually, he established his own trucking company, initially transporting filled dirt to construction sites and later hauling coal from local mines. George's life took a pivotal turn when he married Jenny Cipriani, the daughter of a storekeeper in Smithers who had also immigrated from Italy during her childhood. The Sodders settled just outside Fayetteville, a town with a significant Italian immigrant population. Their two-story timber frame house, located two miles north of town, became the backdrop for their burgeoning family. In 1923, the couple welcomed their first child, and over the years, George's business prospered, solidifying the Sodders as one of the most respected middle-class families in the community. However, George's strong opinions and vocal opposition to Italian dictator Benito Mussolini led to heated arguments within the immigrant community. By October 1945, George had incurred threats due to his anti-Mussolini remarks. A visiting life insurance salesman ominously predicted that the Sada house would go up in flames, and his warning was eerily echoed by another visitor who claimed that fuse boxes would cause a fire someday. In the weeks leading up to the tragic Christmas Eve fire, the Sodders noticed a strange car parked along the main highway, its occupants seemingly observing the younger Sodder children as they returned from school. On the ill-fated night of the fire, the Sodder family was in high spirits, celebrating Christmas Eve. Marion, the eldest daughter, had bought new toys for her younger sisters, and the children were granted permission to stay up later than usual. As the clock approached 10 p.m., Jenny allowed the younger children to extend their evening, provided that certain chores were completed by the two oldest boys. At 12.30 a.m., the telephone rang, prompting Jenny to answer. A mysterious female caller asked for an unfamiliar name amid the sounds of laughter and clinking glasses in the background. Perplexed, Jenny hung up and returned to bed, only to notice that the lights remained on and the curtains were undrawn, a departure from the children's usual routine. Strange occurrences continued at 1 a.m. when Jenny heard a loud bang on the roof, followed by a rolling noise. Despite these unsettling events, she went back to sleep. However, 
After another half hour, the scent of smoke jolted her awake. Investigating further, Jenny discovered a fire in George's office, originating around the telephone line and fuse box. Awakening George and their sons, the family attempted to escape the flames. Tragically, the stairway was already ablaze, preventing access to the attic where the other children slept. Efforts to find help were hindered by a malfunctioning phone, leading Marion to run to a neighbor's house to call the fire department. George, barefoot and desperate, tried to climb the exterior wall to reach the children but was unsuccessful. Attempts to use a ladder were thwarted by its absence, and a frozen water barrel further hampered their efforts. In a last-ditch effort, George attempted to start his trucks, only to find them inexplicably malfunctioning. Helplessly, the surviving Sodders watched as their home succumbed to the flames over the next 45 minutes. The fire department's response was delayed due to wartime manpower shortages, and when they finally arrived, the house was reduced to ashes. Chief F.J. Morris, the fire department chief and Jenny's brother, reported finding no bones, supporting the belief that the other five children had perished in the intense blaze. The official cause of the fire was deemed faulty wiring, and death certificates for the missing children were issued on December 30, 1945. The grieving Sodders, questioning the official account, discovered inconsistencies. They wondered why, if the fire was caused by an electrical issue, the Christmas lights remained on during the initial stages of the fire. Additionally, the missing ladder was found 75 feet away at the bottom of an embankment. A telephone repairman informed them that the phone line had been deliberately cut, not burned, and suspicions arose about a man seen stealing from the property around the time of the fire. In the following years, the Sodders engaged in relentless efforts to uncover the truth. The 1949 excavation yielded artifacts and small bone fragments, but a specialist at the Smithsonian Institution determined that the vertebrae found were likely from a cemetery and had been used as fill dirt. This revelation cast doubt on the thoroughness of the initial investigation. Rumors circulated that Morris, the fire chief, had found a heart in the ashes, but when confronted by George, he confessed to planting a box containing fresh beef liver in the hopes of providing closure to the grieving family. The lack of concrete evidence and conflicting accounts fueled the Sodders' determination to seek answers. Private investigators were enlisted, and the family even sought the assistance of the FBI. Sightings of the missing children were reported, with witnesses claiming to have seen them peering out of a passing car during the fire. A mysterious letter in 1967, accompanied by a photograph believed to be Louis Sodder as an adult, reignited the family's hope for a reunion. Despite these leads, official investigations yielded no concrete evidence of the missing children's whereabouts. The Sodders faced countless challenges, from elusive witnesses to dead entrails. The family's theory of abduction and an orchestrated disappearance gained momentum, with speculation that the children might have been taken back to Italy or forced into a new life under different identities. Sylvia Sodder Paxton, the last surviving sibling who was present on the night of the fire, continued her family's quest for answers. She maintained a website dedicated to the Sodder children, sharing information and encouraging anyone with potential leads to come forward. Sadly, Sylvia passed away in 2021, leaving the unresolved mystery in the hands of the next generation. Did someone break in and kidnap the children? If so, whatever became of them? Did they run away? Do you think the family could have had anything to do with it? I've thought about it ever since hearing about the case, and I have to admit, the case has me absolutely stumped. The enduring mystery of the missing Sodder children has become a haunting chapter in American history. The family's relentless pursuit of the truth, coupled with the numerous theories and speculations, has kept the case alive for decades. The Sodder's story serves as a chilling reminder of the uncertainties that can surround tragedy and the unyielding quest for closure in the face of inexplicable loss. We'd love to hear your thoughts below. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.